Some other news that came out about a week or two, I believe, in the book realm is that To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, a book that I've talked about a little bit on this channel by uh, Christopher Paolini, the author of Aragon and the Inheritance Cycle, is getting a movie already. Now, the book just came out like a month ago. So it's really interesting that the, the book is getting a movie. I assume the book's doing well. You know, he was a bigger author at the time. He, he really did well. Um, so maybe they're really confident. Obviously, this was a deal. The book, the movie deal that he got was something that he's that was in the works before the, the novel even came out. So I think that's a really interesting development. But um, the news came along with not just the idea that it was the book is going to get a movie, but that. Uh, Paolini and his sister, who I believe works really closely with him on a lot of, I guess, the business side mm -hmm. and even on the writing side, obviously not taking part in the writing, but, you know, a lot of the reading and producing and editing type of things regarding to his work that they're going to be working on the screenplay together. Paolini has not released a book since I believe it was like 2013. The Inheritance Cycle finished up a long time ago and it took him a while to get this new book out. It's a book that's in a different genre. I mean, yes, you know, fantasy and sci-fi are adjacent, but his new novel is like full on science fiction, like space opera, you know, fantasy type of vibes. I mean, they kind of blend together the genres to begin with, mm -hmm. but it's a new territory. So the fact that he's already looking into and has the I guess like the, the weight, the author weight to pull something like a movie deal, I think is really interesting. But I am excited for him because at least he does have the chance to uh maybe right the wrongs of the Aragon movie <laughs> that was made, because, you know, if you're familiar with the movie. Uh, and the reception of it, it didn't get good reception. It didn't do well at all. And then over the years, Paolini, uh, it, he made it clear his feelings about the movie and they weren't positive. Yeah. Um, you never know with those book deals or those movie deals that happen, like basically when a movie comes out or when a book comes out, you never really know like how soon the movie's actually going to come out after that. Mm -hmm. Because generally those are the types of deals where, I mean, I'm not particularly familiar with what this deal is looking like, but uh, typically those are the deals that happen where like a script will be written and it'll sit there for years. Yeah. A lot of the time. Like uh, the author, uh, Dennis Lehane, who who his books have been turned into Miss River and Gone Baby Gone, mm -hmm. Shutter Island. Um, he came out, his last book um, came out three years ago and it was announced like the day it released, he had already written the script for the movie and three years later, there's it hasn't made any progress. Um, so... I don't know. I, I I wouldn't see one coming out that soon, though, just because typically when a book yeah. comes out like that and the movie's being written kind of alongside its release, it typically sits for a while. Yeah. And I, I but, definitely expect it to sit for a while because I don't think they've even written the script yet. Right. But what I did think was interesting was that's another thing. If you have a book deal or a movie deal in the pipeline, that's fine. But Paolini himself came out on his YouTube channel and has made an entire video addressing it and talking about it. And I was like, that's really early for something that I usually think of like movie deals from authors like that as like things that are kind of like, well, you sold the rights to it and it's going to sit for years and mm -hmm. years, but this doesn't seem like that's the case. But, um, I do think it's really interesting though, that he's, uh, that he, he is going to be writing the screenplay along with his sister. And I, I feel a little apprehensive about like, I don't know how I feel about authors writing the screenplays to their novels. I think it can be good if they're, separated enough from it um because isn't that's pretty it's right here it's a pretty big book yeah um the difference between being a screenwriter and being a novelist is basically knowing how to cut mm -hmm. like knowing how to cut massively um and with him sort of being burned on his first movie adaptation you know i wonder if he's gonna come into it like a novelist rather than like a screenwriter, um, which might may not be for the best for the movie, though. Yeah. You know? But now, on the other hand, I think one of the interesting things as I've actually just finished reading the book this week and I've done a whole review for it. It's coming out this week on my YouTube channel. But um, one of the interesting things about this book that I thought after hearing the news about a movie is that. I actually think the mov a movie of this story would be better than the novel form. Hmm. I think if they get the budget for it, I think it's all about budget because obviously it's a big space opera and there's a lot of spectacle to it. But that being said, it's a nine it's a nine hundred page book. It's a very condensed story though. It is a single point of view story and is 
essentially just a gigantic adventure through space that's written with a lot of words, but and a lot of things happen, but it's not like some massive, like multi sided story with all sorts of politics and intrigue. It's very much like adventure through space, almost to the point of like a lot of the events of the book. While they did a lot to maybe bolster the characters and the um, the general development of some of the story elements made made them stronger. It, they weren't that necessary often. And it often felt like we were just meandering from adventure to adventure. And I'm not saying that a movie itself would be even great, but I think the actual medium of a movie might would fit better with the ideas in his book because the book itself is very spectacle based often and that it's about, you know, this girl finding a uh, Zeno. It's, it's, it's like a uh, alien that like attaches itself to her body and forms a suit around her. It's like this advanced technology that's makes her kind of like super powered as a suit. And there's, he does interesting things with it. Um, the book is kind of a love letter to science fiction. He literally says that in interviews, um, almost to a fault. Like it feels like he's like, and because I love alien, we're going to have <laughs> this thing like jump out and go through someone's stomach type of stuff. Yeah. And because I like this, you know, it, it honestly feels like at points, it feels like kind of robotically, like he's just like trying to throw in little bits and tropes and he does a good job subverting things and making it his own as a whole. But that being said, some of the spectacle of like a kind of super powered girl in space with like a Xeno suit that like shoots like tentacles and spikes out of itself. And like, it's very made for the big screen. I feel like mm -hmm. space, like ships, planets, magic, different species that are terrifying. They've got tentacles, like, like even the, the final set piece feels like a set piece. You know, it, it feels like I'm watching the end of an Avengers movie when I was reading it. So I, I think that, I think that the there's actually more room for it to be a better movie than a book, possibly. And I think that condensing it for a movie into something a lot smaller is actually might be better for the story. Mm. So it'll, it'll be interesting. And I, I have to root for him, though, because he really did get he, they did him dirty with Aragon, dude. <laughs> like that yeah. was that was a hard time.